and beautiful configurations known as crop circles. Not only have this cryptic phenomena persisted for decades, but the questions now being raised cut to the very heart of the controversy. What exactly is the origin of these amazing formations, and who or what is responsible for making them? Is it possible then that solid scientific support for the claims of authenticity by crop circle investigators has finally and fully ended the debate? How many hours it can take an unknown number of hoaxes to create one of the large and elaborate crop circles can be long debated unless they want to let us in on their secrets. However, what they cannot replicate is some of the chemical and biological abnormalities that we've detected in some of the genuine crop circles. The classic evidence found in the grain of genuine crop circles includes the presence of elongated nodes, expulsion cavities and germination abnormalities. These represent specific irrefutable changes at a cellular level that cannot be forged by hoaxers stomping crops with wooden planks. The disbelievers and sceptics have never been able to explain away what science has indisputably and consistently proven. Another puzzling aspect of the crop circle phenomenon has been the frequent appearance of lights above and near many of the sites. Glowing orbs would sometimes be present and even more frequently they would appear in photographs taken at the crop circle locations without having appeared to the naked eye. It is the lights that play an important role in the extraordinary experience of an eyewitness to one of the most remarkable recent crop circle experiences on record. Nancy Talbot is no novice to the world of crop circles. She is a co-founder of BLT, an investigative research team that includes biophysicist William C. Levengood, whose breakthrough scientific testing procedures have set the standard for evaluating plants affected by the crop circle phenomenon. Nancy Talbot's amazing and unique experience occurred during a research trip to Holland in the summer of 2001. I was there on behalf of Dr. William Roll, the uh, Parapsychological Services Institute, doing some geomagnetic and electromagnetic work uh, at a site where we have a lot of crop circles and an individual who seems to uh, anticipate their coming. I don't know if it's possible for a person to will a crop circle into being. There are many groups who have meditated on particular designs and later found them in the fields. But more interestingly are unconscious thoughts of crop circles where people have either driven by a hillside where there is no crop circle and they get an idea of what they'd like to see there. And the next day when they drive by, there it is. On August 8th, Nancy went to visit Robert Vanderbroek, who lived near the city of Hoven. The primary reason to be in southern Holland was to study more closely a young man there. His name is Robert, who for many years now has had dreams uh, of crop circles occurring in his area, a situation which has uh, often resulted in people going to the area, the field which he has seen in this dream, and there in fact will be uh, a new crop circle. For the first 10 days in Holland, Robert and Nancy visited a number of crop formations which had occurred in the area prior to her arrival. They were gathering the baseline data for Dr. Roll's research. Of the 20th, uh, I had been in Holland by about two weeks by this time, and we had spent the days uh, with the magnetometers out in the various crop circles that had occurred, taking measurements, and every night until three o'clock in the morning doing flash photography or other work in the uh, crop circles. And I was exhausted. Uh, Robert wanted to know if we were going out again, and in disgust I pretty much said, no, I'm going up to bed, and did so, leaving Robert down in the kitchen. Once I got upstairs, I pulled these curtains, thin gauzy curtains in front of the windows, got into my nightgown and got into bed to read for a while. Within about three minutes, I heard an intense, raucous bawling coming from some cows in a nearby barn. But the cattle soon quieted down and Nancy went back to her reading. At about 3.10, the cattle started to bawl again, this time louder, uh, clearly in distress and I realized again that perhaps I should get up and go to the windows so that I could uh, see whatever this was that was happening. Some intuition kept me in the bed. I didn't get up. I would say that maybe three minutes elapsed after that and then all of a sudden out of nowhere this brilliant white 
slightly bluish around the edges, tube or column of light descended with enormous force down to the ground. It lit up my bedroom like a uh, daytime. The outside was so bright I could see the trees across the field. Then everything went quiet, it was dark. Uh, as if nothing had happened at all. I almost wasn't sure I'd seen it. Uh, but within another second, another tube, another column of light descended, again with this incredible force, extremely difficult to explain the energy that was involved there, came crashing down to the ground, and again, it lasted for a second or so, and then it went dark. By this time, I was starting to think of Robert, wondering if he was seeing the same thing downstairs. And before I could get out of the bed, a third column came crashing down, almost in exactly the same location. Again, the outside lit up. Again, my room lit up. By now, I was yelling for Robert, uh, who was downstairs in the kitchen, watching the same thing. And I could hear him yelling for me uh, <laughs> about the same event. Everybody immediately went to the uh, windows at the back of the house to look up to see where these lights had come from, you know, what was up there. And there was absolutely nothing. They were separated from the farmer's field by a fence and a deep irrigation ditch. Just over the fence, about 15 feet into the field, just barely visible in the darkness, was a new crop circle. Nancy's desire to experience the phenomenon in a more direct way was fulfilled beyond her wildest expectations. But what, in fact, had they just seen? There wasn't a hint as to where the light had come from, yet the tangible, physical result of the effect of the light was just a matter of a few yards away. What would a close-up inspection of the field in daylight reveal? Had they just witnessed the true source of authentic crop circles in action? The thought of sleep was completely gone as Nancy and Robert pointed their flashlights out into the field. There were no hoaxers anywhere about, no students with elaborate plans, no men from the local pub with a board attached to one foot, nothing. The question was, would they find the markers they had come to expect when true crop circles were formed? I grabbed a flashlight and as we got to the fence at the back of the house, I, sh I turned it on. And when I put it on the field, there, about 10, maybe 15 feet into the field, was a brand new 35-foot ellipse uh, staring at us back from the dark. Half of the leaves were laid in one direction and half were laid in the other, and so we got a strange, uh, an odd reflection. But we could clearly see this brand new crop circle in the string bean field. The next morning, when I got up, to my absolute amazement, I could see this brand new crop circle from the bed itself. We got up and immediately went to the circle where we found a 35 foot long ellipse rather than a circle off of which to the north went a long pathway and a crossbar like the capital letter T. The bean plants were swept counterclockwise along the northern edge of the ellipse and then laid in one continuous sweep all along the southern edge. The eastern and western edges of the ellipse were slightly squared off, ending in rows of beans on either side, and the standing plants in the rows were completely unaffected. Examination of the plants showed them all to have been bent over at the base, and no broken or split stems were seen. There was no visible trauma to the stems or leaves or the very healthy-looking beans beneath them. Circle research. Uh, involving a study of clay minerals in soils at crop circles indicates the presence again of energies which have been suggested by the plant work earlier on. We might be looking at uh, an energy, a new energy or an energy unknown to science at this point in time. And one of the most interesting ideas that I've come up with since this experience was the possibility that this energy or energy complex is actually interacting with human consciousness. The fact is that not 15 minutes after I had stated the disgust and the uh, frustration over the elusiveness of the phenomenon, the difficulty in studying it, this, uh, these tubes of light and the circle appeared. Not only did they appear, they did so in the closest field to my location not more than 90 feet away from me, and entirely visible from the very bed that I was sleeping in.